Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we share. Now let's get started. So now we're going to be dealing with the mechanism of skeletal muscle contraction excitation contraction coupling means how excitation that means how action potentials lead to the contraction of a skeletal muscle okay so going from the previous lecture what we learned we're going to use them now to understand this now thin filament thin filament it's a little bit very technical you know it has actin okay then triple myosin then you now have troponin that has troponin i troponin c and troponin t so now we're going to be explaining what they do now this i stands for inhibition okay troponin i inhibition and troponin c calcium binding is the part of troponin that binds calcium okay calcium binding then troponin t is the part of troponin that attaches to tropomyosin that's why it's here t troponin that attaches to tropomyosin okay tropomyosin binding okay so what do they do now you know skeletal muscle contraction has to do with the interaction between myosin and actin okay now we're going to talk about the sliding filament theory look at what happens now when the muscle is at rest or the muscle is relaxed actin and myosin are not in contact with each other they need to be in contact with each other for contraction to take place or force generation so this troponin they're all part of thin filament troponin i inhibits the active site of actin do you understand that they are together in the same thin filament it inhibits the active site so that it cannot bind to myosin but alone troponin i is weak in inhibiting or covering the active site of actin so it needs the help of what tropomyosin it needs the help of tropomyosin and the part of troponin that will now go to get that help is troponin t so troponin t will go and attach to tropomyosin to help it inhibit actin from binding to myosin do you understand the connection now? Why troponin C binds to calcium ions? Now, what are, why are we talking about calcium? Now, there's something called the sarcotubular system. Okay? Let me write it here. Sarcotubular system. What do we mean by this? In the muscle cell, okay, the muscle fiber, you have what is known as the transverse tubal something like this okay so this is the cell membrane this is the transverse tubal it's an invagination of the cell membrane of the muscle cell okay so by the side of it you have something like this this is called sarcoplasmic reticulum sarco 
plasmic reticulum. Why this is transverse tubo. Okay, also known as T tubo for short. So this T tubo is like I said, it's a continuation of the cell membrane, it's an invagination, but it's in close contact with this sarcoplasmic reticulum on one side and another sarcoplasmic on another side. So this sarcoplasmic reticulum is like a modification of endoplasmic reticulum in other normal cells. Okay, so what happens is that this place that is bulging is called terminal systeme. Terminal. Terminal systeme. Terminal systeme. Do you understand that? Terminal systeme. Now, what happens? The terminal systeme stores a lot of calcium. It stores a lot of calcium. Here, like this. Stores calcium. Now, what happens is that action potential, you know, it's, up, it's in the membrane. Action potential, the flow of electrical impulse, it's at the membrane. Okay? That's where the electricity, electric current flows through. So, when action potential is transferred, okay, the nerve comes, brings in action potential and releases acetylcholine, you know, synaptic transmission the same thing release as a glycoline that binds to this one and sodium ions and this one the muscle itself generates its own action potential so electricity is now flowing along this transverse tubo so the flow of electricity along this transverse tubo activates a certain receptor known as dihydro pyridine receptor that is located in this transverse tubo dihydropyridine receptor so this dihydropyridine receptor is voltage sensitive it's sensitive to voltage that is that electricity that is around here it's sensitive to it and when it contacts electricity it there's a conformational change you know all these receptors they are proteins a conformational change happens that it now it's connected to another receptor at the membrane of this sarcoplasmic reticulum that receptor is actually a channel it's a calcium channel it's called ryanodine receptor ryanodine okay ryanodine receptor it's a calcium channel. So the conformational change of this dihydropyridine receptor, which is sensitive to voltage, now drags open that channel, this ranodine channel. And what happens? The calcium that is stored here now rushes out. You understand? And now fills the cytosol or the cytoplasm of the muscle cell. So when it fills the cytosol, that calcium can now bind to troponin C. Okay? It pumps out, gives out calcium from that channel. Now binds to troponin C. The binding of calcium to troponin C also instigates a conformational change in this whole troponin system. So all this, the inhibition of troponin I against actin in consonance with myosin now is now released. You know, this troponin is covering the active site. So the binding of calcium to troponin C makes it lose that inhibition. Do you understand that? So the active site of actin is now open. It's now free for myosin to bind. So the opening and the exposure of the active side of actin now attracts the head of myosin are you getting it look at it this head it now attracts the head as the head attracts and touches the active site there's what is called a power stroke let's say this is the head it now 
moves, bends like this. You see it? Once it bends, all this head, they bend. The bending will now make this actin to slide. It's called the sliding filament theory. So these filaments, they don't shorten themselves. They slide over one another. Are you getting it now? That is the process of muscle contraction. The sliding filament theory. Theory of muscle contraction. That is it. That's what happens. It slides. Then when the action potential has finished, has died out, of course, you know, the neurotransmitters and everything will be swept away. So the action potential ceases. What happens? Calcium will now be pumped back. It will pump. There is now a calcium magnesium pump that is located in this sarcoplasmic reticulum, the membrane. It now begins to pump back calcium inside. Calcium Calcium Magnesium ATP It pumps back and once it pumps back calcium, calcium is no longer there for this to bind and there is return to initial inhibition okay, of this troponin covering the active site and all of that tropomyosin covering the active site with relationship with troponin ti and the rest of that is relaxation okay so that's what happens it's as simple as that so next we're going to be dealing with types of skeletal muscle contract a very interesting topic all right so don't go anywhere after this break Right, you're welcome back. So now we're going to briefly talk about types of muscle contraction, skeletal muscle contraction. Okay, so broadly we have two types. You have one isometric, isometric contraction, and number two, we have isotonic contraction isotonic contraction so what do we mean you know sometimes when you hear contraction you always tend to think that the muscle must shorten when there's contraction but no contraction in this sense is actually force generation there is force whether it's shortening or not work is being done Okay, there is generation of force, but you know, in um, physics, only when force moves a distance that you say work is done. Okay, so let's let's see what they mean. Isometric. Anything you see, iso means same. Metric means measure or length. Okay, so the same length. A contraction that the muscle does not shorten does not change let me explain it to you now you see this dumbbell I hold it like this look at my biceps I hold this dumbbell like this my bicep is not being con it's not shortening I just stay in a stationary position you understand I'm using force to hold this thing like this. It's heavy on my hand. You see, I'm, I'm using a lot of force. So, force is being generated. Okay? Actin and myosin, they are in contact, holding each other, but they are not sliding. Are you seeing it? You see it? I just stay like this. This is isometric contraction. Then, isotonic is what there's change of length there's an isotonic is divided into two you can have concentric okay 
okay so let me demonstrate the two for you now concentric concentric look at this dumbbell now my bicep i'm raising it up my bicep is shortening so concentric is the shortening it's a shortening contraction now i want to take it down my bicep is lengthening there's contraction i'm using force the load is this thing the load is weighing on my muscle there is force generation but it's lengthening so eccentric is lengthening contraction why concentric is shortening lengthening shortening lengthening concentric eccentric concentric eccentric okay so that's what happens so these are the two types of muscle contraction and the types of isotonic muscular contraction so in the next lecture we're going to be looking at the mechanical properties of most very important that you know that so i'm going to see you in the next video